Um, well, so how did you how did you begin getting into uh, into journalism out here? Did you just always have a, a, like a love of writing, or what? Uh, yeah, sort of took you into that field. I would say that I had a string of really good teachers mm, that helps. in. Um, in, well, one particular teacher in high school who had a journalism background. His name's Carrie Tyler. Mr. Tyler, I hope you're listening to this. That would be so cute. Um, <laughs> what high school? So when I first moved out here, I went to Hamilton High School and then transferred to Basha High School. Okay. Super, super east side. Hmm. Um, and yeah, uh, Mr. Tyler was super encouraging of my writing. And like I said, he had a journalism background and... I don't know. I, th- I feel like we had a like a moment where I wrote an essay and he called me up to his desk and he was like, did you write this? <laughs> it's like, yes. <laughs> and um, yeah. And then it was kind of like a, a real recognized real situation. And he continued to push me. And I eventually um, got a scholarship to to attend the journalism school at Arizona State. Cronkite, what up? And <laughs> um, yeah, so did that, and then just kept working and writing and finding people that that I connected with, who who I guess saw something in me, and you hmm. know, things just sort of spun out from there. But yeah, yeah, and I mean, yeah, I think it's really a credit to to good teachers I had. And had you always had you? Um... When when did you first sort of start writing? You know, the, it always seems like there's there's that one uh, assignment early on, or uh, finding a, a, a book that spoke to you, or something, and then you 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 write that first piece. And and I, I'm projecting here maybe because I'm <laughs> I'm describing what happened to me. Yeah. And then you just sort of go from there and decide I'm a writer. Mm, yeah i don't feel like i had a a conscious like awakening Mm -hmm. in that way it just sort of was a thing that happened that i liked (laughs) doing and it kept snowballing into (laughs) continuing to do it kind of forever yeah Uh, how did you how did you sort of start out i mean what uh because this uh, sort of leading take me on the journey up to becoming uh the the arts and the music editor for for new times because that's i mean i'm sure you had to you had a lot of you know stuff that you had to trudge through and prove yourself before getting to that point so i'm i'm very convincing but also (laughs) i i it's a combination of um sort of just being like yeah, I can do this. And then like figuring out how to actually do it. Um, so a sort of mix of bravado and then like doing the work. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so, so going back to kind of professors taking me on and recommending me and pushing me to do things, my, my freshman year of college, Richard Ruelas, who, um, who writes for the Arizona Republic, Mm -hmm. he's, he's incredibly talented. He was one of my professors. He recommended me for an internship at AZ Central. So I I covered breaking news for a whole summer. It was super intense. It was basically like a full-time job. Um, and I'm, uh, how old are you when you're a freshman in college? I don't know. You're a baby. <laughs> right, you're yeah. a little tiny baby. And so that was kind of like full immersion, being a reporter experience. Um, one of the biggest stories I covered that summer was – I don't know if you were here or how long you've been in Arizona, but two um, two uh, TV news station helicopters crashed. Yeah, I remember that. Over um, Steel Indian School Park. And so I was out there on the scene contributing to that reporting that the Republic ran that day and, you know, in the following weeks. And so I had that experience under my belt. I, I joined the college radio station. Hmm. I was the music director there for a, for a year and then took over as station manager. I just like to, you know, hop in and, <laughs> and start being something. in charge of shit, there I guess. Go. That's kind of my vibe. <laughs> uh, I, I didn't even realize that ASU had a college radio station. Uh, <laughs> they do. <laughs> they do. If I were still in college and running it, I promise you would know about it. But... um. 
Yeah. Yeah, they do. It's called The Blaze. Okay. It's a, well, I don't know what number it is on the dial anymore, but it used to be 1260 AM. Oh. And uh, the signal was very, very weak. I assume it continues to be very, very weak to mm-hmm. this day. Um, we broadcast out of a tower on university and like, f- I don't know. Well, it, on the north side of ASU Tempe campus. Gotcha. Um, I think it's mainly art school programs that are in that building now. Mm. The Museum of Walking, I think, was was headquartered there. I don't know if it still is. But, um, but yeah, ran the radio station. So got to know local musicians, folks doing cool stuff around town, and just sort of became enmeshed in... I don't know <laughs> stuff that's going on. But you, but um, but you decided you didn't decide at that point that radio was something you were interested in. Yeah, not really. I mean, station uh, management was not in your future. <laughs> I guess not. Um, yeah, so I ended up actually leaving the station my junior year or after my junior year. Um, I was station manager junior year and then kind of felt like, okay, like I did this. Let's go do something else now, Um, which I guess is another facet of my personality. (laughs) We're just having a lot of breakthroughs right now. That's what I'm here for. Great. Um, No license therapy. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, um, just felt a little tapped out on that. I also, in college... um, Worked for Sony's music label division. Oh, wow. Um, and so did marketing on and around ASU's campus and kind of helped promote bands. And yeah. So, so you really did just like hop along and do one thing and then show you could do it and then do something else. Well, I mean, the the Sony thing I did for a couple years, my friend um, Ashley Harris, who who I met through The Blaze, mm-hmm. 1260 AM, um, she did that job and then graduated and sort of passed it along to me, recommended me for it. And yeah, so just like connecting and I don't know. Well, what was that? What was that like working for Sony? What did you? What did you? Uh, what did you really do as far as as that job went? Great question. <laughs> I mostly hung up posters. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that I mostly hung up posters. Um, visited, you know, had kind of like a circuit of record stores in the valley that I would. Okay pop by and say hey here's this here's that here's like so what time frame was this in was this in the 90s then no i mean (laughs) oh my god you're not you 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 don't you look like you're in you think i am jesus christ you look like you're in your 20s for one thing but thank you you're welcome okay i feel better so it was kind of but i it, it seems like ages and ages ago that stuff started closing down like tower went out in the when was that tower was gone and yeah any of like the uh sam goody any of the mall stuff was gone circles was gone pretty much so yeah um no so it was basically like a tour of stinkweeds okay zia locations gotcha. and hoodlums okay. which i ended up working at yeah uh. <laughs> so-, so there you go <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking, so I, I, I put down all uh, high fidelity, I put down my list of dream jobs the other day, and that might have been what influenced it, because I was thinking like record store owner in the 80s, or a uh, member of Bob Dylan's band from the late 60s through 1976, okay. or, you know, so I'm thinking, okay, I, that's probably what was sort of influencing my head a little bit. I'm thinking, <laughs> I, I, I guess I didn't realize how... <laughs> <laughs> how long and also i'm terrible about time but i, I didn't no, realize same. how how long um uh or, or that that record companies would still have reps out there in the field kind of touring shops and so forth yeah yeah i mean it certainly wasn't like a full-time job okay but yeah it was just being like here's the new bands here's some promotional 
totally or, putting yeah. up displays helping kind of coordinate like in-store appearances mm-hmm. going to concerts did you get free music out stickers yes yeah that's pretty cool that appeals to me for sure yeah i mean you know it really ran the gamut though you don't get to <laughs> choose what you promote um some days it's you know, something cool, mm-hmm. a Bob Dylan reissue, for True. instance, mm-hmm. and other days it's, you know, the new Offspring record. So <laughs> tomato, tomato, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm really going to try to recover from the 90s. <laughs> <this year>. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. also I won't edit it out. So <laughs> No, I like it. It's funny. Um, yeah, don't... Uh, Yelling is like my natural speaking energy, so it's totally fine. <laughs> also, thanks for saying I look like I'm in my 20s. You I, you're, totally you're welcome. We're, I, I we're tried good. to recover really fast. <laughs> Perfect. So the 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 what's um this the working for Sony was post uh post college post or during college during as college. well during yeah college. yeah I was a college so that's a good rep. side gig then. Yeah, it was a cool side gig. Um, they they would bring us like they had reps all over the country okay. at different colleges in like major ish markets. Um, so yeah, they would bring us all out to New York for CMJ every oh, year, which cool. doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. Um, but I that used was, to pick up the publication. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. 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 Back back in the nineties. <laughs> back in the nineties. Um. Yeah, I, I did used to pick that up. Um. Uh, but there, there's so I, I wonder really how I mean if there are still reps out there because there've got to be some. I think so. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know how it works anymore, really. But they certainly still have like college marketing divisions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, it's, they've got to get it out there somehow, right? Totally. Somebody must do it. Um, yeah. And then, so you graduate college. Yes. And you decide to do Well, what? so when I graduated college, there were, like, no journalism jobs. Mm-hmm. It was a super fun time to, like, become an adult. Um, <laughs> well, and that continues to this day. Right? No, so. exactly. For sure. Um, but, yeah, so I graduated and was kind of looking for jobs. Didn't find anything in Phoenix. Was still working at Hoodlums, being the, the token girl in the record store. <laughs> Um, which is fine. It's just, I'm comfortable with a dude energy. It's chill. Um, but yeah, uh, an, I'm not comfortable with dude energy. <laughs> You're not? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I like to say I'm a, I'm a secret bro. I have like an aggro kind of, gotcha. uh, inner vibe. Um, but yeah, I found a job in Palm Springs I worked at a newspaper called The Desert Sun, which is owned by Gannett, which is the company I work for again, again now. Yeah, because they, they own uh, how much of the newspaper market? It's Quite insane. Quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I worked there for a little less than a year because I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> Palm Springs I, is, to me, only known for golf and bob hope well that's <laughs> yeah then you wouldn't be surprised uh, by how palm springs is it's very much like a resort town mm-hmm. and there are good parties there you know occasionally mm-hmm. but uh very much not a, a place to want to hang out when you're like a 21 year old straight woman one basically. of those pla- oh <laughs> well, it's one of those places that's a, a very seasonal seasonal ebb and flow too right because you've got yeah totally. season and then a dearth of of nothing for a chunk of the year (laughs) yes i mean you have coachella Mm -hmm. which is maybe exciting depending on what the lineup is that year the year i lived there though i went to coachella i went to um oh god what's the country music fest stagecoach okay and i that was also the year they had the big four Mm. which was metallica slayer megadeth and what's the fourth did Metallica, I say four? Metallica Slayer, Megadeth. Um, I'm a little out of my element in. Uh, Just pretend we anthrax? said all four. You, 
Maybe. No. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> Are they big enough to be on the big four? I'm, it uh, was yeah, metal's a little out of there. very yeah. memorable, clearly, <laughs> to me. So, yeah. I'm sure somebody's, it always happens, at least when I'm listening to podcasts and some, somebody doesn't know and I know, I'm like, it's this, it's this. Yeah. I hope a lot of people are yelling at me right now. I, I do too. That's my aspiration as a podcaster <laughs> is to be yelled at by somebody listening. 